Hello, welcome back to the training room. This is Survival Saturday with Johnny Tiger. The date is Saturday, June 27, 2020. I remember there's this old rumor that still persisted to this day in the martial arts circle, in the fighting circle, that if you are an accomplished boxer or martial artist, you have to register your hand as lethal deadly weapon. But before we get into today's episode, I want to uh, take this chance and tell you that is complete fabrication. Um, even lethal boxer Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, and some of your best, the best MMA fighter, UFC fighter you can name, no one has ever needed to register their hands or their legs or any of their body parts as lethal weapon. And, and you, you're not going to get into trouble walking into a airport uh, with your hand intact or with your legs attached. Okay, that, that, that whole thing about having to register as lethal weapon is just there to, uh, as an exaggeration to boost a martial artist's ego. It's uh, like saying, I'm so lethal that the government have to register me. But as far as facts go, that's completely false. Now, with that said, it is actually quite amazing what a trained martial artist, a trained fighter, a trained uh, survivalist, a self-defense expert can do with his or her body, and not just in the conventional way that uh, we think of. I remember a while ago, I was teaching a student and I was laying out all the major pressure points and weaknesses uh, on the human body for him. And he made a remark that said, wow, I didn't realize our body is that vulnerable. While his sentiment is definitely true, a lot of times we also have to keep in mind that as the more we train, the more we realize how amazing our body is, how much of our body can be weaponized and used in a combative situation. So tonight, I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, run you through a list of uh, human body weapons, uh, at least the ones that I know of. I'm sure that some guru somewhere in the deepest uh, uh, Africa or in some remote mountain in China that find other ways of maybe using their nostrils to kill somebody, but uh, at least I, I, I don't know those techniques. But I'm going to show you what I know, and a lot of these will be very obvious, but maybe, just maybe, there will be a few that you have never considered before. Before we start, you do not want to walk into a fight and say, well, actually, you don't want to walk into a fight at all, if you can help it. But if you have to, if you're going to be fighting, you do not want to go into a fight and say, I'm going to go in here and just use my elbow. Or I'm going to go in here and just use my roundhouse kick. By thinking that way, you're limiting yourself and opening yourself for all kinds of humiliation and defeat. I remember this one uh, bout I did before where I went into the match and I said to myself, I'm going to use nothing but my leg uh, because I have good background in kickboxing and 
Taekwondo and all that stuff. So I went into the match limiting myself to only using my kicks. And that resulted me being defeated with nothing but a simple left jab the entire round. The guy that I was uh, fighting, that's all he did. Every time he saw me twitch or move my leg, he would come in with a simple left jab and move out again. And every time he saw my footwork change, he come in, jab me in the face and back out again. It was that simple. And he was only able to do that because I limited myself. I went into this bout saying to myself, I'm going to use nothing but my leg. So just because you know that your elbow can be used as a weapon or your head can be used as a weapon, don't limit yourself psychologically before you get into a situation. Every fight is different. Every encounter is very fluid. So your mental preparation psychologically you have to stay loose stay fluid stay flexible and be ready to change and be creative at the drop of a hat we're going to start from the top to the bottom right away at the very top we can use our head as very effective weapon. Boom! Boom! As you can see, well at least I hope you can see, when I go in for the headbutt, I'm aiming with my forehead. Because that is the densest part of our body. And also, I'm not whipping my head back and forth. I am grabbing the person, setting myself, keep my neck tight, keep my chin tucked, and I go in, I go in, okay? this way I don't whiplash myself, if I just whip my head back and forward, most likely I'm just going to whiplash myself, or hit myself in the face with their head, similarly, back of the head, if someone come up behind me and throw an arm around and try to choke me, my first line of defense is to whip my head back <clears throat> right into their face. <clears throat> right into their face. Let me uh, resituate. Let me resituate the headset. That's the problem with uh, demonstrating um, any kind of head movement with the headset on my head. <laughs> so from the head down, forehead. Back of the head, side of the head, all can be used one way or another as long as you remember to keep your chin tucked, your neck strong, your shoulder strong. From the head down, of course we have our teeth. <laughs> now I'm not going to really bite him, but you guys get the idea. Uh, Mike Tyson got this one down to an arc. After the teeth, we have our chin. Now, I'm not going to butt someone with my chin. That's just me looking to be knocked out. However, if I'm restraining someone, I need to apply some kind of pain and all oh, my hands and my feet are busy I don't have anything to use I have actually done this before and tapped people out in tournament where I just rest my chin against a pressure point like underneath their collarbone or at the middle of their pet I'll grind it in I'll put all my weight down on my chin and uh, create a pain compliance that way. From the chin down, of course, we have the shoulder. 
a simple turn of the torso and then tightening up your shoulder, you guys seen people bash down doors in movies with their shoulders. If you can do that to a door, you can do that to a person. From the shoulder down, we have our upper arm. Now on the upper arm, you can attack using the front, aka the bicep, or you can use the back of the elbow. <laughs> How do you use your bicep? Well, obviously the range is very limited. But let's say someone come toward me and try to grab me around the waist. Okay, the head is right here, right in front of me. My arm, I can't really get my arm into position to hit them. So in this case, I'm going to swing my bicep directly into their face. My bicep right into their face. That's going to force them back and allow me to use more conventional means of defending myself. And then of course, there's a regular elbow right after the upper arm. Elbow, elbow. Elbow, one of the best weapons on the human body. From the elbow down, there's the forearm. Now how we generally employ the forearm is by using a close line. So I swing my arm out to the side and right into the belly or chest. Or I swing high right into the face and head with my forearm. Just one quick side step and swing like a baseball bat. From the forearm down, we have our wrist. The famous karate wrist bash. It's just like throwing a hammer fist. We cock our hand back, we aim the hard bone of our wrist right at their face. That's so simple. And then from the wrist forward, we have the back of the hand. A simple backhanded hit to the face. With your hand open or with your hand closed. From the back of the hand, we move to the front of the knuckle in a standard punching. And then from the knuckle, we go into the smaller knuckles. If I uh, make only half a fist with my smaller knuckles sticking out, even this, I can hit with that. Even if I don't make a fist, my open palm. My open palm is actually even more effective than my fist. Of course, you can use the underside of the fist in a hammer fist motion. And then, of course, we got the fingers. Finger right into the eyes, or finger bunched together, striking right into the throat. The edge of the hand, when you flatten your hand out, and the karate chop. Your chest and your belly can also be employed to cause a certain amount of damage. Give me a wall, I flatten them like a pancake. Turning back with your back toward your opponent, even your buttock, even your hip can be utilized to push them back from you. Just throw your hip and your butt back into their groin. Further down, of course, we have a standard knee, knee, 
me. Me. And then we have the shin. Roundhouse kick, frontal rising kick, using your shin is a very hard piece of bone. From the shin down, we have the heel. Heel kick from behind, heel kick from front. A lot of ways to employ your heel. This become more effective if you have shoes on. Bottom of your feet in the front stomp kick. In the side kick. Even your toe can be used as weapon in a pinch. And I mean that literally. I have been able to get someone to let go of me after they get a grip on me by using my toe to pinch the inside of their thigh or some other tender part. And God forbid, if I have my toenail a little bit on the long side, I can gouge the heck out of them with my toenail. And of course, if I happen to be wearing steel toe boots, hmm. Watch out. Like I said, there's probably uh, a lot more that we can do with our body that I just personally don't know about. But I think this gives you a very good idea of what you can do with the various parts of your body. Thank you for checking out this week's Survival Saturday. We'll be back again tomorrow for Soul Search Sunday. For now, stay strong, stay safe, have a good night.